What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from the customer. Alright, this story is called Gatekeeping Medical Receptionist Part 1. Technically, living in the UK, I am not a customer exactly, but I do pay taxes, which kind of makes me a customer of the National Health Service. Edits, I've made relevant complaints and there's actually a prequel to this, but uh, let's do this in order. Not chronological order, but the order of release. Anyway, I am so angry right now. I am venting. Call me out on formatting errors, but no, they are down to fury. I work supporting vulnerable adults. During gestures to certain world health crisis. You know, this. I have been present in only one client's home for about a year. For this guy, the story relevant thing I do is book medical appointments. He's extremely vulnerable, so for the most part, medical professionals have been visiting him. He requires a particular treatment every three months. Previous to March 2020, he could walk with a Zimmer frame on flat surfaces. Now he uses a wheelchair, but cannot self-propel. This is a story in two parts. Those involved. Uh, reception... Uh, IR? I don't know. Receptionist with a lovely accent. Okay, let's just call her receptionist. Receptionist, uh, who has a lovely accent. Sadly, the only thing lovely about her... Uh, branch... BR, let's call... <laughs> office manager. <laughs> I don't know. Office manager with a voice like nails down to a, down a chalkboard. There's the nurse and the client I'm working for, and there's me. So, part one. March 2020, lockdown has only just begun. Uh, receptionist, the medical practice. What? Oh, so the receptionist is saying, okay, medical practice. How may I help you? Hi, uh, I'm me calling on behalf of Carl. Uh, my name will be in his notes. I can give you identifying information. I'll need Carl to confirm if I can speak with you. Hmm, thinks I. No, you don't, because I just gave you identifying information. But okay, let's just get on with this. Oh, okay, just one second whilst I explain things to him. I put the phone on speaker. Hey, Carl, I'm making a medical appointment for you, and they need you to tell them I can speak with you. What? You remember treatment needs arranging? Yes. Okay, well, I'm talking to medical practice on the phone. Uh, can you let them know that they can speak to me? How was last time, wasn't it? Best guess he meant he'd given extensive permissions previously. Uh, yes. Uh, could you do it again? What? To the receptionist. Could you check his notes? It should list me as someone you can arrange things with over the phone. I think you're going to need to come in and arrange that. Uh, well, I can't at the moment because of lockdown. Could you just check Carl's records? I I've given you identifying information, which means you can check that. I can't check that because you aren't the patient. Well, look, you don't have to tell me what it says, but could you open his records on the computer in front of you and read his notes about access? I'm going to check with the manager about this. We have to note potentially abusive situations. Okay. Mere moments pass on hold before receptionist returns. She sounds annoyed. You need to give me identifying information before I can do anything for Carl. Okay. Here is identifying information. Yes, the same information I've already given her. Okay, I'd like to know what we need to do to make sure Carl gets treatment, as he's not supposed to leave the house. He can leave the house for medical reasons. Oh, okay, great. Uh, can I make an appointment for treatment? Which site? Accessible site, please. Accessible site. Has been closed due to COVID. You, you can have an appointment at... Completely inaccessible site. I'm afraid he can't get up the stairs there. Is there somewhere else? Needs this treatment. You know? Yes, but he can't access completely inaccessible site. Is there anywhere else or would he need a home visit for this? He's not housebound, so he can't have a home visit. You can't just get a home visit, you know? That's for people who really need them. Okay, so how do we do this? I might be able to get you something at third site. Okay, what's the access like there? There's a ramp. Okay, is it flat inside? There's a ground floor treatment room. Okay, wait, isn't there building work outside there? You can park in town car park. 
I'm sorry, that, that's too far for Carl to walk. Then why don't you drop him off outside, drive to the car park, and then come back? I'm sorry, that's not gonna work, could you? I think you're being difficult about this because you want to home visit, and that's not going to work on me. Look, he needs someone with him. I can't drop him off and come back. While speaking, I'm looking on Google Maps at the site to work out if there's some other way of doing this. So bring someone else and have them help whilst you drive. There's no need for you to be so difficult. Sorry, you want me to arrange for there to be two of us to cover this shift? In my car, at the same time as a vulnerable adult. What's your name? I'm going to have to write on Carl's notes that you're being difficult about this. I spot something else on Google Maps. I just want to be clear. You expect two of us, one driving, to maneuver an elderly man using a Zimmer frame over cobbles. Cobbles don't make any difference. Now what is your name? My name is me. Suddenly, there is another voice on the call. This is office manager. I'm the practice manager. What seems to be the problem? Hi, I'm me, working with Carl, who needs treatment and has mobility issues. Could I ask to go to a site that he can access, please? Okay, I'm putting you through to a nurse now to work things out. Okay. Hello? This is about Carl? Yes. So, can we come out next week and give him his... Treatment. At home? Yes. If Brovid is still a problem, we'll come out next time too if that's okay. Then I'll make things easier for us. Okay, thanks. And so it was all sorted. Except... This is a two-parter. Well, how could they screw it up anymore? I'm so curious. Oh my god, I don't know how I'm gonna wait. I don't know how I'm gonna wait. Oh wait, I don't have to because part two is right here. What's up guys, it's part two Zach here with Gatekeeping Medical Receptionist part two. You only see me every once in a while when there's a part two. The part one Zach, he's pretty boring. Me, I'm a cool guy. Um, I'm a little calmer now having written out some of this, but I'm still angry. I'm venting. Call me out on formatting errors, but no, they are down to fury. I feel like... I feel like that's just exactly what they said the first time, but I could be wrong. Actually, I'm not wrong because I just read it. <laughs> I work supporting vulnerable adults during gestures to world health crisis. You know, this. I've been present. Okay, well, it is a bit repetitive here, but oh well, for about a year, one client guy. Okay, for this guy, the story relevant thing I do is book medical appointments. He's extremely vulnerable, so for the most part, medical professionals have been visiting him here requires a particular treatment every three months and nurses have been coming in to deliver it. Oh, I got a burp. Previous to March 2020, he could walk with a Zimmer frame on flat surfaces. Now he uses a wheelchair but cannot self-propel and can access a medical transportation service to get certain types of appointment, but not others. This is a story in two parts. Those involved, we already got through this. Um, part two, March 2021. Lockdown is coming to an end. Yeah, yeah. Medical practice. How may I help you? I freeze, thinking. Oh no, it's her again. Hi, uh, I'm me calling on behalf of Carl. My name will be in his notes. I can give you identifying information. And how can I help you today? Uh, Carl's been having home visits to administer treatment, but I know he can start accessing some things at the surgery now. Uh, should I make an appointment for a nurse to visit or should he go to one of the surgeries? If he can get to a site, then he doesn't need home visits. Okay, uh, even for treatment? Yes? Great, uh, can I book an appointment for him? I can offer you an appointment at completely inaccessible site. Sense of deja vu intensifies. I'm sorry, he can't access that site. Before lockdown, he could get to accessible site and accessible site is closed due to lockdown. You can't get there. You have to go to third site. Okay, I know there isn't a car park there. He'll be using transportation service. Will they be able to get him in? Of course they will. It's got a ramp. Yes, but it's a cobbled street. Is that going to cause them any problems? You'd have to ask them that. Do you want this appointment or not? Carl needs this treatment. Not getting it arranged for him would be neglect. I swear she capitalized that word with her tone. Okay, thank you. So that's appointment at third site on that date? Yes, you'll need to write that down. Thank you. Bye now. 
I was pissed off after I put the phone down, but I had a cuppa and a biscuit with Carl, and then we got on with the day. The next day, however, Carl's phone rings, so we put it on speaker for him to answer with my help. Hi, this is uh, medical practice for Carl. How? You've made an appointment at this time at third sight, have I? Hi, uh, this is me, and uh, I help Carl with appointments. He does have that appointment, yes. Can I ask how you're accessing the site? We have notes saying that Carl's in a wheelchair now. Uh, that's right. Uh, we'll be booking medical transport service a week beforehand. Ah, just so you know, third sight is on a cobbled street, and medical transport service can't access it. Most patients with wheelchairs can only access access it if they're self-propelling. Okay, so how do we get Carl his treatment? I think for this month we'll put you down for a home visit again, and then accessible site should be open again in June, which should be fine in a wheelchair. Okay, um, so I called to book this appointment and didn't request third site. I was told the cobbles wouldn't be a problem. Okay, well, now you know they are for wheelchairs, so you can clarify that in the future. Okay, sounds like it's over, doesn't it? Sounds like it's all sorted. No, it isn't, or I wouldn't be spitting feathers still. Today, the day of the appointment. Carl's phone rings. We put it on speaker. Hello, is that Carl? Yes? We have to cancel your nurse's appointment today. Oh, am I seeing the nurse today? We have to cancel the nurse today because you're not housebound anymore. Hi, uh, this is me and I help Carl with appointments. Oh, do you? Yes, uh, Carl needs treatment on a pretty tight schedule. So what do we need to do to make sure that happens? You should have booked an appointment at one of our sites. You can't just get home visits because you want them. So I originally booked an appointment, but the practice manager called to cancel it because third site is inaccessible to Carl. It is an accessible site. I don't know what accent I'm doing anymore. It's because Carl isn't self-propelling and needs medical transportation service that he can't get to third site because of the cobbles. The cobbles don't matter. Well, manager guy thinks they do, so could we still have the nurse come today? You can't just have home visits when you want them. They're for people who, who need them. Okay, manager person arranged this, so could you check whether Carl needs a home visit with her, and then I'll call back to rearrange if necessary? You're going to need to call back. Okay, then I will. Carl and I have another cuppa, and I get out the chocolate buttons. They're supposed to be a treat for him, but to be quite honest, I took advantage of his liking to share. After lunch, the phone goes again. Hi, this is nurse. I am a nurse with medical practice, and I was supposed to see you today for treatment. Could I ask why you've canceled? I do something really bad at this point. I don't give Carl a chance to autonomously answer. It just pours out of me. We didn't cancel. Carl needs this treatment. The receptionist keeps wanting us to go in because she thinks he doesn't need a home visit, but medical transport service won't take him to third site. Please, can we get this home visit, then try for accessible site next time? I didn't do the robo voice, I'm sorry. I'm actually sat outside in the car. Is it okay if I come in with treatment now? Yes! Carl had his treatment, and Nurse was most interested in what the receptionist had said to me. Apparently, receptionist had called Nurse to cancel while she was out on her home visits and had already got treatment with her. Nurse said that bruh, manager person, lady, guy, might call me to clarify what had happened, but that she thinks receptionist is skating on thin ice. She didn't say why, but I can imagine. Wow, nurse lady's a big old jerk head. She tried so hard to like, not nurse lady, receptionist. Nurse is a sweetheart. Receptionist lady's a big old jerk head brain, and she was just trying to freaking use any little bit of power she had, any bit of pull she had to just ruin someone's day for no reason. She's a dummy head. This story's called, The relief that washed over our server's body language made me feel simultaneously good and awful for him. Okay. My boyfriend and I went to a restaurant with socially distant outdoor seating for dinner on Easter. The whole shtick of the restaurant was the 90 plus beers on tap. When we got there, the hostess let us know their carbon dioxide had blown, 
blown <laughs> and they were working on getting a new one and said she wouldn't be upset if we wanted to leave. We ended up staying anyways and I'm glad we did. I used to work as a server so I could tell right away they were in the weeds. The service was still great and they did their absolute best. I asked for a cup of ranch to go with my fries and the server forgot to bring it out. He remembered halfway through the next time he checked in and immediately began profusely apologizing. I interrupted him right away with, don't even worry about it, I've been there before, it's all good. I could see the relief wash over him. I'm talking his whole body relaxed as he asked, you're a server? I told him I used to and that I know exactly what he's going through right now. He relaxed even more and began describing the hell shift he was working. I thought that was the bad word for a second. It, it was nice to see how he relaxed when he realized I was a server and wasn't going to blow up on him, but it made me a bit sad that servers, retail workers, etc. had been so conditioned to automatically expect abuse from customers. Holy crap. I mean, I kind of always had that like realization, but when you put it like that, that's so true. They expect abuse. That is so... Wow, man. Talk about the whole man is inherently good versus inherently evil debate because... Wow. I guess... Ah, man. I guess we're inherently evil, but, like, not that evil. Like, I'm sure that, like, 99% of the people that yell at servers, if one of their servers was just, like, collapsing on the floor about to die, most of them would probably try to help, right? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.